Hi, Jason Canal, TQ Barbecue. To make the best burgers, you have to use fresh ground beef. However, if you don't have a food processor or if you don't have a meat grinder, what are you gonna do? Today, we're gonna show you how to make fresh ground beef for your burgers using just a knife. If that's something you wanna see, it's coming up right now. For proven recipes and techniques using live fire, smash down that subscription button and hit that bell notification and you won't miss any of our videos. So the inspiration for this video comes from my friend David Parrish over at Adrenaline Barbecue. If you're not familiar with him or his channel, go check it out. He creates the Slow and Sear and he makes these awesome videos with all kinds of great information in them. I was trying to think what would be a good first cook on the Slow and Sear and we're already close to 50 videos and we haven't done one burger recipe. So I thought we were way overdue to do a burger recipe. So today what we're going to do is try to do a reverse sear steak burger. One problem I have though is I know that grinding your own beef will lead to a much better burger than buying that minced pasty meat at the supermarket. The problem I have though is I don't have a grinder or a food processor here at the restaurant. So I'm gonna try grinding it using only a knife. In my head it makes sense and I can see it, but I've never done it before. So we're gonna see how it turns out using a reverse sear technique so we get that nice medium rare pink juicy flavorful meat on the inside and that good crusty tasty flavorful outside on the burger. So since we're going to be doing this cook in two parts the first thing we want to do is smoke. So to smoke I don't want to get too many hot coals in the kettle otherwise it'll create a much hotter temperature than 275 which is where I want to keep this during the cook. So I'm going to take about seven or eight pieces of charcoal and light this over to the side and once that gets lit I'm going to add more charcoal to it so that it will slowly burn across keeping a nice consistent temperature of right around 275 degrees adjusting the vents as necessary. What we have here is two pounds of chuck roast. I love using chuck when making burger meat because it's got all this wonderful fat in here. I'm a huge proponent of having at least 20% fat when making your own grinds. So you can see that there's plenty of fat running through this chuck roast right here. So the most important thing to do before you start cutting the meat is to freeze for 15 to 20 minutes. You want a nice stiff texture so you get that good coarse grind so when you're cutting it, it doesn't form into a paste. So in each one of these, there's hard fat and there's soft fat. You can see the hard fat is right here. How do you know it's hard? By putting your fingers on it and by pressing. If it doesn't give, then it's hard fat and you want to take that out before you cut it up into your grind. The first cut I'm going to make is long cuts. I'm going to cut them into strips and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and cut it into cubes. And then once that's done, I'm going to rotate it another 90 degrees to cut it into cubes once more to get that good coarse grind. So in this pile right here, we have none of that hard fat that's not going to render out during the cooking process. This is beautiful meat that I'm going to form the patty with. As I'm forming the patties, I'm going to be as delicate as possible. I don't want to smash the meat together. I also want to make sure I get at least one inch because we're going to use a reverse sear on these hamburgers. In order to use a reverse sear properly, you've got to have one inch of thickness. As you can see, this is a beautiful beefy patty at 11 ounces. I'm going to season both sides of the hamburger with salt and pepper. So for today's cook, we're going to keep it somewhere between 250 and 275. I'm not super concerned where we're at as long as we don't get up over 275 because I do want to try to impart some good smoke flavor into the steak burger. What's a burger without bacon? We're going to go ahead and smoke off some bacon. I'm going to season it up with a little bit of the rub. Because I want to sear these off, I need to get a chimney basket of hot coals going. So these burgers have been smoking for about 45 minutes. We're going for a target temperature of 115. I want to shoot for about 20 degrees less than what my final temperature is. And since I'm shooting for medium rare, I'm going to go for about 135 because I know when I pull them off, they're going to carry over cook another three or four degrees. I'm going to go ahead and add these hot coals to the sear side. Before we sear these off, we're going to go ahead and clean off our grates using this aluminum foil. And we're also going to get it nice and wet using a little bit of oil as well too. Put the burgers onto the hot coals and go for that nice, beautiful, flavorful crust. I'm 
gonna go ahead and add a piece of cheese and let it melt down. And these guys will be ready to pull off once that cheese melts. We're gonna go ahead and put these brioche buns down and get a slight toast on them also. So now it's time to assemble the burger. On the bottom, I'm gonna use a piece of green leaf lettuce. On top of that, I'm gonna put our ground chuck reverse seared steak burger with melted cheddar cheese. I'm then gonna put some of that smoked bacon on top of it. On top of that, I'm gonna add a piece of hot house tomato and then a couple slices of dill pickle and some fresh onion rings. And we're ready to cut into this bad boy and taste it. Only one thing left to do at this point. Now for my favorite part, the taste test. Wow, that was absolutely fantastic. So beefy. I love that meat to bun ratio. We had probably more meat than we have bun, which is the sign of an awesome cheeseburger. The bacon was absolutely fantastic. I was really impressed with that, that tomato. The tomato was super ripe. Putting the salt and pepper on there, it exploded with flavor, which was absolutely fantastic. I did not pick up a huge smoky note. Um, I did pick up a nice strong charcoal flavor in the steak. I was also surprised, if you remember, I was worried about the steak falling apart during the cooking process. It didn't, it held together beautifully. It was moist, it was juicy, and it was absolutely fantastic. This is a good go-to if you wanna make a fresh ground hamburger, but you don't have the equipment, you don't have the food processor, you don't have the uh, grinder, you can certainly make your own fresh ground steak burger using this technique I just showed you today. If that looked good, if that's something you wanna try, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, Jason and all GQ Barbecue.